All right guys, in this quick video, I wanna show you how to get your Alexa footage from this to this. Um, this is a look that I've kind of developed based on watching Roger Deakins work. And one of the things that um, inspired me to do this was I was looking through some footage that I had and I saw this picture, or I saw this video. Um, and it really reminded me of lighting situations that Roger Deakins typically in, allowing these frosty highlights to really come out of a character's face. If I zoom in and I show you uh, these frosty highlights, what I mean, you see it on the glasses, you see it um, on his hands and face. Uh, I saw this a lot in his last movie, The Goldfinch, and it was really inspiring. Um, more, you know, I'm a director of photography, but I'm also a colorist. Um, it inspired me more as a colorist uh, to look into what he's doing in the color suite and um, how he's working with uh, contrast and saturation too. Um, if you look here at the curves, you'll notice um, there it's actually pretty contrasty uh, relative to Roger Deakins' work. Uh, but one thing that's important is the highlights, where our information is in the highlights. And we see we have a combination of yellow and red. Uh, I mean, of green and red, excuse me. Uh, but it's what it's creating is a yellow tint to um, what seems like our cool highlights. Um, so there's some complexities in the tones there um, that really also bring out the face as well. So if we go full screen with this, you'll see um, the tonalities in the skin are more um, brown and earthly rather than um, this saturated red color. Uh, and that's mainly due to this. I want to show you guys right here um, my node tree. So I always start out with noise reduction. Let's, um, let's go ahead and turn all of these off. So this is our log image. And the first thing I want to do is I want to add noise reduction. I typically add about, like for a shot like this where it's not much noise, I'll add about four. Uh, the rest, um, most of this grade you're gonna find is in your log. Now, I want you to look at the full log, what I've done here. Um, I've, I've pumped in some juice, I added some saturation, but you see how the skin is a lot more red and you see how the highlights lean more towards, um, they lean more towards cool. And then I actually really like the color of this lamp right here. Um, it's a very filmic uh, look to the color of that lamp. Um, but later I, in, I decided I wanted to sh shift the color a little bit to make it a little bit more dramatic. So um, you have the light hitting there cool, but on his face right here, I'll uh, go back into full screen. On his face right here, he has a little bit too much red, a little bit too much, uh, not enough brown and I wanted to recover that a bit but basically what I did in the log is I added contrast of about 1.25 and then the rest of it was just color balancing um, as you can see here from my scopes uh, and I stayed within my gamut uh, this is a very important graph for people who don't know um, about this graph and DaVinci Resolve Staying within your color space is extremely important, and I plan to have a video on that really soon. Um, yeah, so we color balance in the log, and after we've done that, and after we've tweaked in log where we want our highlights, where we want our midtones, um, quick note on the midtones, you'll want to shift them up and shift your shadows down. So shift mid-tones up, you see in his hand, we have a lot of mid-tone detail. I actually add mid-tone detail later um, in the node graph as well. Um, but be sure and like keep your shadows right there, like just playing with zero, but don't let it go over. And our next node, that's when we bring the warmth in. And I wanted to bring the warmth in because I wanted to distinguish these tungsten lights. I wanted them to have a little bit more character. You see, as we added uh, the look, we also boosted our saturation. Um, but at the same time, later we want to, I'll go ahead and jump over to this node. This is where we actually take out color boost. And this is super important for truly cinematic looks in DaVinci Resolve. I found that bringing down the color boost to about 12 and then pumping in juice earlier on into the image uh, will 
it'll do some really cool things with the actual color distribution in terms of your saturation because when I have color boost on there's a ton of leakage back here from these tungsten sources and one of the things about Roger Deakins grades is that he really is a cinematographer that values control and um, once we you know messed with the saturation a little bit and we gave it some juice we added some warmth that's when this part of the grade you want to start establishing control and you I did that in this particular situation um, with my hue my hue versus curves um, so first of all I wanted the skin, I'm gonna go ahead and blow this up a little bit. I wanted the skin to kind of like be robbed of its magenta-ness. So I took that away and pulled the reds. When I tap there and I qualify his skin, it's all here in the reds. And I just took all of the skin in his. So to finish up, the last thing before we add our texture to the image is um, I want you to see where our shadows are, first of all. They're completely aligned. You wanna make sure that your shadows are black and this is where I would do it in your global adjustments. Just go into your primaries. Uh, I, I like using bars. Uh, turn your Luma mix. Uh, you wanna set that to zero. Um, and this, I, in this case, I guess I, I don't know what happened there. But you want to set your Luma mix to zero because you don't want what you're doing with your colors to mix what's happening with your actual uh, exposure. You want to shift then, you want to make sure that everything is balanced in your shadows. Don't worry about the highlights. We're going to shift those right now. We're going to do that in log. And I want you to see right here where I've moved my highlight wheel. You see how I've moved it over to yellow? Watch what happens when I put it back. You see how everything is that ugly blue? Roger Deakins likes a little bit of yellow mixed in with his blue. And you see what happens. Watch what happens on the curve. And you'll see this. Look, you see how everything goes from balance to unbalanced we're giving it that we're giving it that uh, filmic unbalanced look um, highlights with 35 millimeter film are never truly white and by giving it that little bit of character it, it really is the secret sauce to a Roger Deakins great um, and you just see like we didn't do much I mean let's go back and look at our node graph one more time We've, we have not done much at all. This is where we started and this is where we finished. I think what it comes down to is this was an image that shot like Roger Deakins in a way that it's, it's in terms of the way it was lit, very similar to a way he would light something, but it's also just really well lit. And honestly, a colorist is nothing without a good cinematographer and a good collaborator. So um, from the lighting here to, you know, the way the light hits him in that frosty way that we discovered um, and talked about, it's all interwoven, it's all connected, but it's about bringing that out of the image. And that's the way I want it. I've learned to kind of approach that Deacon's look is it's kind of working with what you have uh, rather than trying to recreate the look. It's about taking what you have in camera uh, and adjusting it. There's uh, one more thing I forgot to mention before we close out. Um, there's a really important curve that not many colorists talk about, um, but the good ones do. And it's this one right here. It's Luma versus saturation. The Luma versus sat curve is basically where, you, based on how bright a part of your image is, you can take down the saturation. Let me show you what happens when I turn this off. There's no control over the color. The color is spilling everywhere. And it actually doesn't look that bad. 
problem with it is Roger Deakins really, as much as he preserves mid-tones, he also mutes them a bit. And the best way, in my opinion, to mimic that curve is I find the sweet spot where I need to create it. I bring up highlights, just like a film negative is more saturated in the highlights, and I bring it down in the shadows, just as it is in the shadows. So Roger Deakins, though he's a very, you know, committed Alexa user, he his grades mimic the characteristics of a film saturation curve um, and you see that all in the detail right here how in the shadows it's not as saturated but then we get closer into the midtones and closer into the shadows I mean into the highlights and we start to see where the image actually takes on its color and it's in the upper part of the image it's all all of the color information is pretty much right here and it's low contrast this is more contrasty lower contrast and look how much mid-tone information we have that's the secret sauce um, the last thing on the node graph that we did we add some texture we add some grain i use um shout out to kazi for um actually helping me figure out the grain structure that I like in images and typically what we do is we do a 400T um, and we make the I'll put make the grain size 0 0.001 not 0 0.004 0 0.001 I'll typically take the grain strength up to like 0.35 Depending on the scene, you can make things more or less grainy. And because this scene is kind of dark, I might choose to push that grain a little bit to like 0.5. And that's really going to bring it in. And you just do a before and after. And if it's 1080p that you're looking at, you won't be able to see it. But like right here, it's just... It's on the money. It definitely has that film texture. And I mean, just look at the image. Like, so hopefully you guys learned something. Uh, this is my first time doing like a, an actual breakdown. But yeah, so this is, uh, this is pretty close to, um, to a Roger Deakins look that I would try and mimic.